The Olden World, written by Tsar Yoshi. Chapter 777 With Imperial Sanction. The lights just went out? Maple blinked, looking around as a chorus of grumbling rose and the room's unicorns lit their horns. The group was seated on the balcony of a dining establishment, getting lunch and treating their tournament friends in the aftermath of the play, and suddenly the gray sky was the only source of illumination far above. Welcome to Granbell, Safford apologized, her own horn glowing spring green. Not a lot you can do but bring your own lights or stick with someone who has their own. Must be nice living on a self-sufficient airship all the time. And Gerardo chuckled, trying to diffuse the sudden tension and putting his chin on a curled talon. It certainly puts our fuel worries into perspective, though everyone here looks like they're just carrying on as normal. Amber nodded, glancing around at the other tables. It must be hard to live with an earth pony here, neither having a horn for light nor wings to fly around the central shaft. Mm, Saffron shrugged. Well, the power crisis is new enough, not a lot of people have moved out of the area, and where would they go? Grand Bell's dark? The whole continent's dark. At least Stormhall has learned to deal with it over the past while, Gerardo mused, having lived under such tight constraints already. Mm, Shrinesbuck folded her hooves on the table and stared at them. I have a niece who wouldn't be happy about all this. You all remember Blue Leaf, right? It's exactly like Blue Leaf. Maple folded her ears. Periodic blackouts? You have a vertical city, so everyone low down probably has to live their lives in complete darkness. And all the power comes from Garshiva's temple, which is just like the generator no one could enter. Shinesbuck winced. To be fair, I probably could have done more about Blue Leaf myself if I had tried. But Anridge is big, and I thought I could delegate it while I got the Sky District to work on a solution. This is also the capital of the Empire, rather than a rural reactor in the middle of nowhere. I doubt just anyone could lock themselves in and interfere with the power supply. At least Grand Bell seems richer and better equipped for this than that town. Hmm, Saffron shook her head. Well, this certainly isn't a place you live if you're impoverished. But what exactly are you supposed to do? Hard to buy batteries when trade's such a mess with Vossidale and Einridge. And do you know what would happen if everyone burned candles for light to the bottom of a hole? Airflow just doesn't work like that. Not with the city's ventilation system powered down at least. I can't say what'll happen if this keeps up or gets worse. Unicorns will become valuable, Sharpie said, mostly sitting and listening. In what way? I couldn't predict. But the less ponies have magical technology to rely on, the more they'll remember to rely on their own magic. Um, Brightcoil blushed, her own horn glowing as well. I'm glad I could be helpful. Well, if anyone can do something about it, I doubt it will be us. Maple shook her head. Even if there is someone like Neon Nova messing with Garshiva's generator, I don't really feel like breaking into her temple to look for them. Neon Nova? Saffron blinked. Isn't that the MC up in the tournament announcer's box? He is, Gerardo sighed. Sounds like their resumes haven't exactly clung to them. Him and his brother Howe are the public speaking equivalent of mercenaries without class or morals. We ran into them in Iron Ridge, where they were working as rabble rousers for Herman's mercenaries. Mmm, harsh water sip from a drink. I didn't see either of them often. They were usually out and about. Both of them were pains in the flank. Saffron shook her head. Sounds like Stormhoof needs to work in his hiring practices. The whole world needs to work on things. Sharpie sipped at her drink. As long as I can provide for my family with the dignity I deserve, I'll be fine. Bright Coil nodded slowly beside her. After a whole month of this, though, it has been long enough for us to think about... What happens if this never gets better? If there was no longer a power distribution agency to work for. Obviously, the continent will still need power and the grid itself is in place and well maintained. Ponies will always need power, Sharpie assured. And they'll need others to get it to them. Though they probably wouldn't mind having the existing system work out instead of undergoing a painful transition to a new one, Gerardo remarked. What about Gonshiva? Have either of you heard word trickle down from above about our plans if things break further? 
Surely she must have been approached countless times. Garshiva hadn't been helpful. That said, she usually doesn't do a lot. Ah, Sharpie squared her shoulders. She told the council and the presses that this is the power distribution agency's job, and Meltdown is certainly getting harried. I'm certain she knows the nature of the problem, but hasn't told anyone, even her own inspectors. Probably because the problem isn't ours. Scheinsbach shook her head. Well, it's certainly a lively conversation topic. I wonder if the events at Stormhoof help take heat off it, or vice versa. Neither, Sharpie said. Most of the media thinks they're related. Some think Gazelle is to blame, but he's been reluctant to own up. He's blatantly unrepentant about everything else he's done recently, so that would be strange if it's true. What about Meltdown herself, Gerardo suggested? Perhaps she has something to gain from doing all this on purpose? Sharpie thought for a moment. She might. There are certainly ponies corrupt enough to do it. I don't think she would, but am not confident enough to go on record. What about last night, Starlet murmured, voice low. Mingarshiva and Meltdown showed up at our ship. Do you think that has anything to do with this? Maple blinked, tilting her head in thought, when suddenly there was a rush of wings, and three armored, decorated griffins alighted on the balcony, all the restaurant's patrons looking up, startled. You are the delegation from Anwich, correct? The lead guard approached Scheinspark and bowed. Princess Gwendolyn requests an audience with you and any you deem trustworthy at once. Will you attend? Scheinspark blinked, looking across her friends. You go, sugar cube, Saffron smiled encouragingly. Don't know what that's about, but the princess doesn't summon folks for nothing. We all will stay here and cover the bill. But we were supposed to be paying... Maple raised a hoof and lowered it. Right. Can you tell us anything about what this is about? The princess did not explain the nature of her request. The guard shook his head. Well, Gerardo said, rising from his chair, that sounds a hair more urgent than a formal summons. Let us see what adventures await us. Yo, you guys were speedy, Valet greeted. Maple, Amber, Starlight, Gerardo, Shinespark, and Harshwater striding into the throne room flanked by guards. Gazelle and Lynn waited with her, and Starlight bristled slightly at the sight of the prince. Valet? Scheinspark frowned, horn glowing. You were down here? Valet scratched an ear. Yeah, something like that. Listen, Lynn here has a spiel for you. We have been discussing the power outages, Lynn announced. If you have been living in Stormhof, where no energy is the norm, seeing them here will likely be unusual for you. I don't doubt you've been talking about them as well. Amber frowned. That's the kind of language I expect from someone who's about to ask a favor. Do you propose we deal with this? Gerardo raised an eyebrow. I hope you have something in mind. We were merely giving idle speculation and having a clue what actually ails you. You get straight to the point, don't you? Lynn nodded. I would. I have a proposal for you. She turned, walking to the edge of the throne room dome, waving a wing for everyone to follow. Valet has told me there is a crystal flame in the core of Gashiva's temple used to power the entire empire, as well as your airship. Is this true? A harmonic flame, Valet corrected, in a crystal tree. Scheinspark nodded. That's a reasonable guess. If my father was able to invent the machine to use these flames for power, Gashiva likely could have done so centuries ago. Right. Lin stared down at the pit, still visibly lacking its barrier, the temple core now glowing slightly in the darkness. I have also heard that you are low on this flame and possess means of transporting it. I propose that I will give you access to the temple core. You will investigate the problem for me and return with information Meltdown may be unwilling or unable to share. In return, should you be able to gather it, I will allow you to keep any harmonic flame you collect as a reward. Gerardo's eyes widened. You can do that? That's got Shiva's inner sanctum. You're allowed to let us in? Shinespark frowned. Letting us into Garshiva's home without our permission sounds extremely dangerous. I am, Lin said. It is not a well-known secret of the Imperial Dynasty. When Garshiva reigns from her throne in full view, 
any can petition to speak with her. Typically, only a clergy know that spire is hollow, and when speaking with her, you merely stand on its roof. The temple core itself is visited perhaps once in a generation. But the power to open its gates is deliberately given to the rightful empress of the Griffin Empire, Bagashiva herself, on the day they are foaled. To our rules we have to abide by. Other sphinxes are forbidden, and no one may enter for the purpose of visiting Gashiva. But we are the gatekeepers and the judges, and if you enter to seek power for your airship, under her rules, I could let you in. Horsewater blinked hard. Why is Gashiva so fond of making others do her work? You mean how Meltdown has the most powerful job in the Empire, and Gashiva actively listens to schemers and manipulators while letting her legitimate government flounder without guidance or commit whatever morally nebulous acts it will? Hmm, Gazelle shrugged from his wheelchair. When you're a goddess, you don't have to answer questions like that. So, in short, Gerardo said, glancing keenly at the princess, you're saying you not only have a way down there, but Gashiva intends for you to have it? You're supposed to be able to let us in? Have you ever opened it before? Maple tilted her head, looking slightly nervous. Lynn nodded. I have opened it once when I was very young, to let Meltdown in before she became who she is today. My brother would remember it better than I do. He was the one who asked it of me. So, the question is, Valet began, stepping forward, do we even care? We've got enough fuel to make it back to Iron Ridge, not with any to spare, but we could refuel before heading to Yakakistan or something. See if we can get another writ of harmonic sanction there. Having more now would be nice, but isn't life or death. And even if Garshiva is really strange and has something in there we're not supposed to walk in on, there's still meltdown. I could kind of see us fighting her in there with Garshiva just watching in the event that she's evil. Lynn filled me in while you guys were coming and I'm not 100% sold on whether this is a good idea. Everyone looked at each other and no one wanted to speak until Starlight stepped forward. I'm going. Maple stared at her. Starlight? I think I should, Starlight said. When Garshiva visited our ship last night, she took my friends, and I bet it's related to this. I also think I might know why the rules about entering are the way they are. She lowered her voice. And I kind of want to feel a harmonic flame again. You mean why Gashiva entrusts the empresses with judging who's worthy of entry instead of doing it herself? Gazelle raised an eyebrow. The same reason she declares how regents work in tournaments. She likes watching mortals judge others. That's all the explanation I need. You have a different idea? Vele asked, glancing at her. Starlight swallowed. She was certain it had to do with her revelation in Mistvale that Garshiva and the Night Mother were one and the same. Asking the Empress for entry was likely a condition for meeting with the Night Mother in person and gaining the wish she offered. But this didn't seem like a secret she could just tell any of her friends. If anyone, it would be Valet because the bad pony talking about the Night Mother's cutie mark had been the last clue that helped her put it together. But she hadn't even told her yet. Well, Valet tilted her head. You're kind of staring. It's not one I want to talk about, Stolid said. I'll go in. Maybe Valet should come too, just in case, but maybe everyone else should stay safe. Maple bit her lip. The fewer, the better. Most interesting, Gazelle rubbed his chin. If I were you, well, I have no trustworthy advice to offer. Good luck, ladies. I certainly wouldn't mind seeing power restored to my sister's empire. If Starlight goes, I'm definitely in too, well, I promised. But yeah, she had the point. I have no idea what it's like in there, if it's like the Iron Ridge one or different. And if it does come to blows, probably best not to have too many along who can't defend themselves. That said, you sure about this, kiddo? Starlight mutely nodded. She wasn't and didn't want to be questioned, but there was a big part of her that wanted to feel the peace she had felt at the Iron Ridge Flame, and another that wanted to find and help Glimmer. And the Iron Ridge Flame had helped her magic, 
She could use it for short periods now and not get headaches that took days to recover. Maybe this one could help her again? But in the back of her mind, there was the lingering fear that she would have another vision. One of the gray world with an older valet who knew her full name. A vision that could tell her more about that future and how to stop it, but also that it hadn't yet been averted? Uh, she swallowed and stared at Lynn. You have my thanks. Lynn bowed to her, and her specifically. You should make any preparations you need. My guards will fly you if you require a visit to your ship. When you are ready, meet me on the roof of Gashiva's core. End of chapter 777